Hello and welcome. You are watching a technical training video in a series of videos about solar powered water system design presented by the West and Central Africa Regional Solar Hub. Let's get started. We hope you've been enjoying the video so far on the five steps of solar powered water system design. This video is going to focus on step three, system flow rate and total dynamic head. So step three of designing solar powered water systems involves calculating the system flow rate and TDH or total dynamic head. We'll start with the system flow rate and there are two possible methods for determining the system flow rate. The first is to divide the daily demand, which was 25.2 cubic meters by the expected hours of peak sunlight per day. For this project location, we estimate there might be eight hours of peak sunlight per day. So when we do that calculation, we get 3.2 cubic meters per hour. The second option is to use safe borehole yield as the design flow rate. This is required when option one exceeds the safe borehole yield. For this project, the safe borehole yield was 4.8 cubic meters per hour, and our result from option one does not exceed 4.8 cubic meters per hour. Whichever option we use, we must be sure that the design flow rate must not exceed the safe borehole yield. So in this example, let us use the estimated flow rate of 3.2 cubic meters per hour calculated in option one. Okay, now that we've got our system flow rate, we're ready to calculate our system TDH. For this, it's important to see the overall layout of our system. So we have on the bottom left, the bottom of the borehole, then the pump, the dynamic water level, a well cap, and then that flows through piping over to our treatment equipment, and then all the way up to the top of our water tank. It's important to consider the elevations of these various components of the system. And the table in the bottom right shows those elevations. The TDH of the system is calculated by the following equation. Our static head plus our friction losses plus our minor losses plus treatment losses. First, we determine the static head using the following elevations. We take the top of tank elevation and subtract by the dy dynamic water elevation. This is shown visually here, where the static head is this the dis vertical distance between the top of our water tank and the dynamic water level. Next, our friction losses are caused by friction as water passes through our piping. So our friction losses occur at these parts of the piping system. Our minor losses occur at bends in the system or where there are fittings or where there might be valves or instruments such as pressure gauges or meters in the system. Lastly, our treatment losses occur when water flows through the treatment system. These are helpful reference tables that include factors or coefficients that are used when calculating TDH. So based on your pipe material, you have different roughness coefficients or C factors, which affect your friction losses as well as your minor losses. And then your minor losses uh, table there for various fittings, and they have different loss coefficients. And lastly, you might have a table or something from a manufacturer of water treatment equipment that describes the pressure loss through the treatment system. This table shows the various pipe lengths, pipe diameters, the C factors, and then the fitting loss sum of coefficients for the different sections of piping in our system, from the pump to the well cap, the well cap to the ground level, then from the ground level to treatment equipment, and treatment equipment to the top of tank. And then these show the equations that are used to calculate friction losses. So if you're interested in that, hit pause and you can look at that in more detail. There's also an equation for minor losses. And then there might be a treatment loss equation where a treatment loss can be calculated. 
And then finally, we add all of these losses together to determine our total dynamic head. Let's look at how this looks in the solar powered water system design tool. So now we've arrived at step three in our solar powered water system design tool, where we will determine the design flow and total dynamic head of our system. We can remember that the design demand pulled from step one was about 25 meters cubed per day. Next, we're going to enter the estimated hours of operation for your specific project location. This is based on the estimated hours of peak sunlight during the day. In this case, it was eight hours per day, but maybe if you're in an area that's um, not as sunny, you might have fewer hours per day or maybe more. Then it the design tool estimates the flow rate by dividing our design demand by our estimated hours of operation to give us 3.2 meters cubed per hour. Then you would enter your chosen design flow rate. You could enter the 3.2 calculated above or option two, which is to enter the safe borehole yield from step two. But in this case, we're going to go with 3.2 and then if necessary, provide an explanation if these two numbers are different. But then it's very important to ask the question, does the design flow rate exceed the yield? Because remember, we can't go above the safe borehole yield. But in this case, 3.2 is less than the safe borehole yield. So the answer is no. So that's design flow rate. And our design flow rate was 3.2 meters cubed per hour. Next, we'll look at total dynamic head. The first part of total dynamic head is to enter elevations all the way from the elevation of the top of tank to the elevation at the bottom of the borehole and various elevations in between. Then the spreadsheet automatically calculates static head, which is the difference between the elevation at the top of tank and the elevation at the dynamic water level. Next, the spreadsheet will automatically calculate friction and minor losses based on information we enter about our system. You can see there's various sections of the system from pump to the well cap, well cap to the ground level, ground level to treatment equipment, and then treatment equipment from the, to the top of tank. And for each of these sections, you can enter different pipe lengths, inner diameters, and roughness coefficients, and then minor loss coefficients. Now these roughness coefficients and minor loss coefficients can be determined from the reference tables shown earlier in this video. You might have uh, different pipe materials that are used that determine different roughness coefficients, such as PVC or HDPE pipe, which has a roughness coefficient of about 135. Or you might use galvanized iron pipe with a roughness coefficient of about 120. Then for your minor loss coefficients, these are bends or fittings or gauges in the system uh, or maybe a water meter. And then for each of the sections based on the number of fittings in that section, you would add up your minor loss coefficients for all the various fittings that cause minor losses. And again, the TDH reference tables shown earlier in this video can give you a reference for what those values of minor loss coefficients might be. So all those added up together for each section, you'd enter those here. And then the spreadsheet automatically calculates friction losses and minor losses for each of the four sections and adds the totals up here. So we get a total friction loss of 0.31 and a total minor loss of 0.15 meters. Next, we'd enter treatment equipment losses so if the treatment equipment loss is known from the manufacturer, you'd enter that in this first box. In this case, we know from the manufacturer that there's an approximate treatment equipment loss of 7.07 meters. But you may also have a formula. So you could enter your own specific formula for your treatment equipment um, if that specific formula is known. So sometimes the loss might be based on the flow rate. It might be a function of the flow rate. So you can enter that specific equation here. And if you're referencing the flow rate, you would just want to reference it above based on the chosen design flow rate here. But in this case, our estimated treatment loss from the manufacturer is 7.07 .07 meters. 
And then finally, we calculate total dynamic head by adding together our static head, our friction losses, our minor losses, and lastly, our treatment equipment losses. And for this example, we get a total dynamic head of 54.5 meters. And that's the end of step three. Thank you for watching this quick technical training video about solar powered water system design presented by the West and Central Africa Regional Solar Hub. If you want to learn more or get assistance with the project you're working on, visit our website at wcarsolarhub.org. Thanks for watching.